Ini apa atas sih cerita ini? Ini apa atas sih? I don't know how to milk. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I am Sass Carey, a holistic nurse in Vermont. I went to Mongolia with Kathleen Skechafero in 1995 to learn from a doctor whom I'd seen the year before translating original Tibetan Buddhist folios onto the computer. I was drawn to discover what was to me the cutting edge of the old and new, east and west. Not only was my teacher the author of the book on Mongolian medicine, he was also trained as a western doctor. I thought I would spend the time learning techniques and therapies. Dr. Bolsayan, however, led us step by step through 5,000 years of oriental medicine. Only then were we taught assessment and treatment methods. Sizes the same, not very this, not very this, only this. You look at this little. Tiny space. Yeah, tiny space. Enough for one grain of rice. Ah, one grain in a box, yes. <laughs> one grain. Yeah, patients, right hands, the same. Indentation after after this right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. This mark um, this very okay. Uh, this middle this assessment yeah. or diagnosis of disease in Mongolian medicine is performed by feeling the pulses, which there are 12 pulses. Each one relates to an organ, which might be out of balance. It doesn't mean it's sick, like has cancer or something. Looking at the tongue, which is considered the window to the inside of the body, and looking at the eye beds, which if they're red or yellow, that indicates hot disease, and if they're white or pink, be considered cold disease. Their medicine is completely about balance. It's about hot and cold. It's about the five elements. It's about the wind, bile, and phlegm, the three diseases. And it's all about balance. Disease is an imbalance. Treatments, whether food, behavior, herbs, or therapies, are given to bring the energy of the body back into balance so that it can heal itself. Milk is the center of the diet in the summer, meat being the center of the diet in the winter. How long does it age? They ferment it, they make cheese out of it, they make curds out of it, they process it in every way you, we can imagine. And it's all part of their health. Mare's milk is a, an important method of hospitality. Whenever you go into a gear, which is a Mongolian name for a yurt, the first thing you're given is fermented mare's milk to drink in a bowl. Balancing food is one of the treatments. There is no bad food. <laughs> which is unusual to Americans. There's no bad food. It's just that every kind of food you have, you need to balance. In fact, they believe that if you have mutton, you need to balance it with vodka. It's not everything that they use in Mongolian medicine that probably would fit with American diet or American beliefs, but the balance concept seems really important. Oh, 
we would often go to the countryside to learn to identify herbs and that's when it began to make sense to me and because I would see rhubarb growing there or I would see columbine or I would see buttercups or things that grew, grow in Vermont that I understand. I just didn't understand that they were used as medicines. You stick there at home and mix it. Oh. This is milk. Oh, you mix with milk? No, milk. This is powder. After this is fire, very this is after dried, uh -huh. after prepared. Yeah. Oh, so you right. put milk in mm -hmm. there? This uh, very powerful for uh, body. This is actions good. Uh, all the food, this action is not good. Oh. We memorized a lot of herbs, but we memorized them in Tibetan and Latin and Mongolian and often didn't have a translation for it in English. It's only now that I'm, be a year later, that I'm beginning to understand what they are in English. A lot of what we were learning was the different ingredients that worked well and balanced each other and at the same time how to identify the ingredients. Five ways of preparing medicine for people to use. One is powder, which you just take on your tongue. One is a tea. One is a butter. One is a tincture. And one is a pill. We went to the countryside with the Dr. Bolsayan in his Rus Russian Jeep through roads that were pretty non-existent and met with people everywhere coming for services and sometimes even the people needed to be assessed in the Russian Jeep or in the gear or on, on the ground or anywhere. And uh, Dr. Bolsahan would give them some herbs and sometimes I would do treatments on them too. Energy treatments way out in the steps. All the techniques in Mongolian medicine are used to shift energy. Step herbs like other herbs and medicines are created in a balanced formula to shift energy in the body. A lot of our training was in the institute or in the countryside, but sometimes we would go to the local monastery and watch the lamas dispense medicine after mixing it and praying over it and then give it to the people. What, what's the matter? She has a headache. She has a headache. Mongolian medicine includes acupuncture, acupressure, chiropractic, all kinds of manipulations, and they're not gentle. <laughs> Treatments do not only include diet and lifestyle, they also include spiritual practice so that even a little boy that came in with a rash was taught meditation as one of the first techniques 
to improve his health. And then he was taught a method of Qigong, and he was taught that those exercises. And only then was he given moxibustion and acupuncture and acupressure and energy work, all the other pieces. He would be learning all these pieces, like first diet, lifestyle, energy work, breathing, full spectrum of methods to heal. Does he feel anything? One of the techniques is moxibustion, which heats the body by burning herbs above the body or putting them on acupuncture needles and that exacerbates the, the method that, of healing and bringing energy to that point. The needle shifts the energy because it's, it's in an acupuncture point and the moxibustion heats the area and increases the circulation to that area. The doctor creates a suction in the jelly jar or the cup by making, um, by burning a substance in the jelly jar. It creates heat and it creates a vacuum in the jar and then is put on the body creating a suction and so the skin comes up into the jar and this increases circulation to that area it also is a way of loosening up muscles by moving it around it it increases the use of the muscles I wondered when I was there from my Western point of view and my scientific point of view, if which of these works and how they work and when they work. And as far as I know, people are just beginning to do studies on these. And I feel like they need to be researched in with Western standards to see if they work. This is special uh, mineral. This is medicine plants, uh, five uh, or several minerals. It's special uh, five. Now the one piece that I know works and that I know is valid is there is energy and that's not considered in Western medicine. That's the cutting edge for me is I know that there's energy and I know that they've been practicing as if there is energy for all these years whereas we haven't. And so if they have all these methods of moving and changing energy, I'm open to learning about them and I'm open to researching them. But we need to see what parts we can use to integrate in the Eastern and Western health care. Sometimes the doctor referred people to me to do the energy work that I've been doing for a long time. Even the people out of, country people out in the steppes accepted it as part of their medicine. They, it, there was nothing unusual about it. Some of these methods like energy and working in the energy field, these are considered new age things. The uh, nursing modality was taught in the New York University School in the early 70s and that's sort of when it began to come back here to this country, therapeutic touch. In Mongolia, they are very integrated in their systems. Somebody came with a broken arm and the doctor just wrapped it in a sling and sent him to the Western Hospital. Then on the other hand, people would come from the Western Hospital to us with their lab tests or their blood tests or their EKGs and say, okay, what kind of medicine can I have to balance myself now? And so they work in really in harmony. After completing this three-month training, I received a certificate as a doctor of Mongolian medicine. My life is dedicated to bringing together 
and integrating Mongolian techniques with Western techniques through practice and research, through teaching and cultural exchange, thus bringing together the old and the new, medicine and life. Thank you.